Now, concepts that we see in this chapel right here is very important because on December the 25th, as the sun has always done, is born out of the death of winter. So we, our ancestors took this story that goes back to an early period, and Haru became personified as the birth of the sun at December the 25th. He became personified as the sun. So symbolically, it showed that a set gave her holy birth on December the 25th. How, that, how they would know because it's the helical rising of her star perpendicular to the sun at December the 25th that I go out in my backyard and witness this every winter. You can too. As Ceres rises, the constellation of Orion rises to the east of it. There, when that star rises, it's said that Haru would be born. Precisely at December the 25th is the birth of the sun. Then we see during the time of the spring solstice, that's the resurrection of the sun. Now the question is, why is it the spring solstice not, doesn't have the same date as the winter solstice? We know that Christmas is always December the 25th. But nobody can ever tell you when the date of Easter is. Sometime it's in March, sometime it's in April. You know why? Because it's a Tehuti holiday. It's a lunar holiday. Now, how you can tell, it's always the last, it's the, it's the first full moon after the spring solstice. Those of you who remember those calendars that got the phases of the moon on it, that they are now taken out of circulation because you can start to look at it. So when you look at the spring solstice, some of you can get the, the calendars that got the spring solstice, follow it, first full moon, the first Sunday is Easter. That's how you can tell when Easter is going to be because it's a lunar holiday. And considering it's a lunar holiday, who represented the, the Netaru for the lunar? Tehuti. So that's what it goes back to, ancient Kemet. That's why we see the dates are different all the time, even though most people wouldn't know that anyway because they got you into the bunny, you know, the rabbit, you know, the chocolate rabbit and the eggs, even though a rabbit doesn't lay eggs because that's Greek Orpheus stuff because their idea of the resurrection was based off of the Greek women painting themselves and they would run and hide. The Greek men would get a pregnant rabbit because the rabbit's proliferation because it's born with his eyes wide open. That would symbolize what? The moon. The full moon. A rabbit's born with his eyes wide open. So that had symbolism to it. So when they would find her, they would have all this sex and fornication until the rabbit had its litter. And that was the Greeks' idea of how the spring solstice came back. Okay? So that's why there's no difference between the Playboy bunny and the Easter bunny. They both represent sex. And then, of course, if you don't get enough sex, you start to eat chocolate. <laughs> yeah, that's why you got... That's why you got a chocolate rabbit and a big chocolate rabbit. The bigger the chocolate rabbit, the more sex you need. That's what, I mean, that's what it goes back to. So this is all symbolism. So when you start to paint that egg, it's the Greek females who painted themselves. So tell your children the truth. They're going on an Easter leg hunt because that's what it came out of. It now, yes, an Easter leg hunt. When they do that thing in the White House, they're going on an Easter leg hunt instead of Easter egg hunt. Now, right here, I see Hedda Roo up there, her zoop type. Okay, what do you, what's her ears look like? Cow. A cow. A cow. So here we see, so this is a zoomorphic, anthropomorphic uh, animal and human figure here representing the cow because the cow, the great mother earth, as well as the surrogate mother for Haru. And this chapel right here, this is where Haru was born on December the 25th that I showed you in the lecture in that tour book that they, that they took out of circulation because white folks became mad at the fact that this chapel that predated the establishment of Western version of Christianity, where Haru was born on December the 25th. So again, that's what makes these the books in stone, brothers and sisters. Our ancestors built for eternity. When you see the brick walls around this structure here, that was not meant to stay for eternity. That's why it's all dilapidated. But these structures are here for eternity. So 1,000, 2,000 years from now, hopefully, the, the story that I'm telling from the truth from these temples right here and stories that we still don't know and should know and the only way we're going to know is to study this ancestral knowledge. So we're coming back here to evoke the ancestral spirits, and it takes us. It takes us to do this because white folks are too caught up into their own deification of themselves and, to, and their own religion and thinking that's, that's, that's the truth. 